Good, happy Tuesday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday evening, so let's begin. First up, we begin with COVID-19 updates. New Hampshire COVID-19 information, what you need to know. Let's take a look at that right now. And here is a look at that information for all of you right now. There are 9,208 number of people in New Hampshire have tested positive for COVID-19. 7,805,32 number of people in the United States have tested positive. 456 number of deaths from COVID-19 in New Hampshire. 752 number of deaths from COVID-19. Number of people have been hospitalized with COVID-19 in New Hampshire. And 215028 number of deaths from COVID-19 in the United States. And now let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where current cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester 89. And let's take a look at this map of New Hampshire where total cases of COVID-19 are. Manchester 22, 12. And now let's take a look at these three charts here. Let's start with the first chart here. New cases each day in New Hampshire. In the purple, daily new positive COVID-19 cases. In the orange, new hospitalization. And then the red, death. Let's take a look at this chart here. Current cases in the purple, total current COVID-19 cases, and in the orange, current hospitalization. Let's take a look at this chart here. Total cases in the purple, total positive COVID-19 cases, in the orange, total hospitalization, red deaths, and blue recovered. And let's take a look at this chart here. Positive PCR test rate. And let's take a look at this chart here. Daily PCR test. And let's take a look at this chart here, age group of cases, female and male of cases, and risk information. Let's take a look at this chart here, infections, hospitalizations, and deaths. And let's take a look at this chart here, deaths, percent of New Hampshire population, race slash ethnicity of cases, and hospitalization. And a reminder, you have common symptoms, fever, lack of smell, cough, Difficult breathing, chills, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. How it spreads, and prevention tips. And be sure to stay with the Riley King Network for the latest of your COVID-19 information. Judge backs Sununu's emergency authority to spend federal COVID-19 relief funds without lawmakers okay major ruling on separation of powers issue during emergencies on expenditure of federal funds. A Superior Court judge ruled Tuesday that Governor Chris Sununu is empowered by state law to altercate and ex Banned more than one billion in federal COVID-19 relief funds without first receiving legislative approval. Several leading state Democrat lawmakers sued the governor in April, charging that by passing the Joint Legislative Fiscal Committee is in expanding funds sent to the state under the Federal Cares Act, he was violating separation of powers provisions of the state constitution as well as state law. Well, after six months of legal maneuvering in several court hearings, Judge David Anderson issued a final decision in the case Tuesday morning in Sununu's favor. It was immediately unclear if the plaintiff lawmakers will appeal to the state Supreme Court. A House spokesperson 
said they will review the ruling in the coming days and had no comment on this time on whether an appeal will or will not be filed. In an 18-page ruling, Judge Anderson, he wrote that while an emergency statute passed in wake of the 9-11-2001 terrorist attacks does not provide the governor with sweeping authority to spend money without a legislative approval. Another statute passed in 2002 does. This law, the judge wrote, grants the governor authority to accept and spend money received per suit to its terms during a state of an emergency. The judge also noted that the legislature itself provided the governor with the authority they are now seeking to remove. By enacting RSA 21-P.43, Anderson wrote, The legislature deliberately authorized the governor to accept and spend federal funds made available for purposes of emergency management. Therefore, the governor's spending of CARES Act funds is done pursuit to an act of legislature and is agreeable to the act and resolved the general court. Should legislature wish to remove this authority, it may do so by changing the law. The ruling also says lawmakers would have authority through the fiscal committee to approve or reject the governor's ability to spend state funds. However, these are not the funds the governor is spending, the judge wrote. Rather, he is spending CARES Act funds that have been appointed by the federal government and accepted via the express provisions of the state statute granting emergency authority. Such funds are not within the scope of the plain language of law requiring fiscal committee approval for the expenditure of state funds. Drawing upon funds therefore does not require fiscal committee oversight. The state received more than $1.25 billion in Federal CARES Act funds, and the governor's office told WMUR on Tuesday that so far $1.18 billion has been altercated and $12.6 million has been expanded. The lawmakers had said that even if they had won the case, they would not have sought a clawback, the money already expanded would, but would have sought approval of federal funds moving forward. Sununu praised the ruling in a statement in which he criticized the Democrats. Had the Democrats won this case six months ago, our COVID-19 relief efforts would have stalled negatively impacting every citizen of our state, he said. I'm thankful for the Superior Court's ruling in this case, but it is unfortunate so many state resources were wasted defending this failed lawsuit by Democrat leadership. In this unpresented public health emergency it is prominent to get relief out to New Hampshire families fast to them proud that New Hampshire stands as our county's gold standards
for rapid relief. Two of the legislative leaders who brought the suit, Fiscal Committee Chair Rep. Mary Jean Wallen and Committee Vice Chair Senator Lou de Osandro, expressed disappointment. We respectfully disagree with the court's ruling, they said in a joint statement. Today's ruling is a blow and to our Constitution, promise of balance, government which grant guarantees that the legislator, as the people's representatives, transparently decide how taxpayer dollars are spent. It is unfortunate that Granite Staters will continue to have no voice or oversight over how state and federal coronavirus relief funds are altercated and spent. New Hampshire is stronger when we all work together. That's why it is disappointing that Governor Chris Sununu continues to cut the legislature out of New Hampshire's recovery efforts. Regardless, as legislative leaders, we will continue to do all we can to ensure the remaining funds provided efforts and efficient relief for Granite Staters, Wallen in DeSoto said. One million given to Manchester organization to fight veterans' homelessness. Liberty House Renovations will help house renovations and provide services. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. For the easy and the complex, the small stuff and the big, we are here with the affordable local loans, easy to manage accounts, and financial advice to help you blaze a trail, figure stuff out, and make your money go farther. We're Granite State Credit Union. Live bold. Actually, are pulling up that beam. Governor Sununu was amongst those taking a tour of the renovations at Liberty House in Manchester. Three old buildings that used to serve as homes for priests have been combined and are now being converted to house veterans struggling with homelessness, all made possible by a check for a million dollars from the Federal CARES Act. Those funds are going to finance this renovation, the brick and mortar. We don't use any of those funds for operational expenses. When the renovations are complete, this will be more than just a place to sleep. It'll have areas for veterans to relax and socialize and offer programs. The governor tapped the group Swim with a Mission to spearhead the distribution of the federal money. The governor uh, trusted us with $4 million of that money to go out and help veterans struggling with homelessness and mental health. And Liberty House fits that mission. The governor also got a chance to do some renovating. And while touting this program and the parties involved, the governor would like to see this replicated elsewhere. We want to get these services out to the North Country, out to the Medanoc region, out to the seacoast. Uh, but this being kind of a foundation model that everyone builds off of, um, that, that's awesome. They're hoping that the renovations will be complete by Thanksgiving, giving the veterans and those who service them something to truly be thankful for. In Manchester, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. For Portsmouth restaurants temporarily closed because of COVID-19 worries. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. You're a smart guy. You've got everything pretty much figured out. Well, almost everything. 45% of traffic deaths could be prevented by wearing a seatbelt. Smarten up. Buckle up. No excuses, guys. Four Portsmouth restaurants are closed this morning due to concerns over COVID-19. The Rosa announced it would temporarily close after an employee tested positive for the virus. Its sister restaurant, the Martingale Wharf, will also close temporarily. This comes after Jumpin' Jay's Fish Cafe and the Flatbread Company announced last week that they would temporarily close after employees there tested positive for COVID-19. 
65 more positive tests were reported in the Granite State Monday, bringing the total number of cases to more than 9,200. Ten of those new cases were found in people under the age of 18. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Former President Obama appears in New Hampshire focused DNC video outlining voting options. Granite State, among battleground states targeted to online releases. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast. Have a great rest of your evening, and I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night and goodbye, everyone.